Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I'm going to show you my eyeshadow palette collection and I'm also going to declutter quite a few of them I think. So if you're interested in declutters or in project pants please hit the subscribe button and now let's hop right into the video. So I've decided to go by brand, so we are going to start with my Makeup Revolution palettes. I'm just going to lay them all out so that you can see each of them. So I do own five palettes from Makeup Revolution and the first one that is going to go is this one here. I bought it during the summer and it's called Deep Dive and it's from their Reloaded line. So this is what it's looking like and it's a quite nice color story. I really liked it when I saw it in store, but the quality is just not there. And I have so many other palettes that have blues and greens in them that are so much better. So I'm not going to hang on to this one. There are a few shades that are very nice. This green here, for example, it was beautiful. And this dark gray here or this light icy blue silver. It's also very nice, but it's not enough for me to make me want to keep it. So I'm going to declutter this one. Then next we do have this palette here. It's from the Revolution Forever Flawless line and it's called Flamboyance Flamingo. And it has this beautiful packaging with the feathers. I love this packaging so, so much. So this palette has been in my Pandas eyeshadow series. It has a really nice mirror in it and this is what the color story is looking like. I do really really enjoy this palette. It has a beautiful formula. The formula is so much better than in the other palette that I have just shown you. So I don't know why they change up their formula every now and then but this one here is amazing. I think it's the newest one from them that I do own so maybe it's because of that. Maybe they just changed the formula now it's better. I don't know. But this one here is beautiful. The mattes are pigmented. You can build them up, you can blend them out so easily. And also the metallics are really, really nice in this one here. So, so I do have three pans in this palette and I do want to have more. So I'm going to keep this one here because I love it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful formula. Then next we have this one here. It's from the I Heart Revolution line. It's called Tasty Avocado. And it's an all green palette. So it's looking like this. I do have one pen in here. I have had this shadow in my Pandas eyeshadow series again and I really enjoyed using it. But I have to say, I have so many more green eyeshadow palettes now that I do enjoy just a bit more because the formula is just a tiny bit better. I think that this formula is quite okay. You can really work with it. You can create beautiful green looks with it. But my other palettes with green eyeshadows in them are just better and even easier to work with so I know that whenever I want to reach for a green I am going to reach for one of the other palettes so I think I'm going to give this one away to someone who wants to try it and everything that I'm going to declutter I'm going to gift it to friends and family or I'm going to resell it so this one here I think I will give to a friend or a family member who wants it and who wants to try it. And I still think that it's a beautiful formula for Makeup Revolution but I just do have better ones. So I'm going to give this one here away. Then next is this one here. It's called the Precious Stone Ruby Palette. So this is what it's looking like on the inside. And as you can see it's a beautiful color story. I just wasn't a fan of the formula. It's different than their other palettes. The mattes are very, very sheer and very powdery, so they kind of buff away when you want to blend them. And the metallics have a weird, I don't know, a very weird formula. It's like everyone has hard pen immediately when you try it for the first time. So, I don't know, I wasn't a fan of that and they also didn't really last very well on my eyes, so they creased a lot and I don't know, I just wasn't a fan of it. So I'm going to declutter this one. Then next one is another palette from the Forever Flawless line and it's the Forever Flawless Ice Palette. And it's a blue palette and as you can see it's a beautiful color story. It has some great neutrals and some awesome and beautiful blue eyeshadows in it. But again, it's like the Avocado palette. It's just I do have so many other blue eyeshadow palettes and they are so much better. So I just don't need to keep this around. And I think that someone else could really, really enjoy it. And I don't want to keep things that I'm not going to use. So I now know that I'm never going to reach for it for some blue eyeshadows. So there's no point in it for keeping it for me. So I'm going to declutter this one. Okay, so, so far I have decluttered four eyeshadow palettes and I'm going to keep one. 
Then next I do have my BH Cosmetics palettes and it's quite funny because I really started to trying them more in 2020 than I have ever tried them before. It started with those two mini palettes and then I've gotten the two bigger ones and I'm a huge fan of their formula so let me show them to you. This is my Desert Oasis palette and you have seen it in my Pandos eyeshadow series. I will link my series down below if you want to catch up on it. I'm going to start a new one very very soon but I wanted to show you my eyeshadow palette collection first so that you all know what palettes are in my collection and what could be rolled in in the project. So this is the Desert Oasis and it's a beautiful warm toned bronzy palette with some pops of blue and I absolutely adore this palette. I do have two pans in it, this one here and this one there and I just really really enjoy this palette. I do absolutely love it and whenever I open it up, I don't know, you know how it feels sometimes. I just feel like I'm falling in love every time I open it up and I just do love this palette. The formula is amazing and the color story is so beautiful and although I don't wear warm tones and bronzes that much, I don't know what it is about this palette but it just works for me. I do love the whole desert theme so I know. I'm a huge fan of this one so I'm going to keep it. Then next is the Avocado Toast palette and it's one of their 16 pan palette and it's their green one and it has some really beautiful, I don't know, pinky and red tones and this rusty color here. So I do really like this color story. The formula is amazing. It's so, so beautiful. I haven't used it that much recently, but I really want to get back into it. So I really hope that I do have it in my Pandos eyeshadow series very soon because I would love to work on this palette. I do absolutely love it and I think it's my favorite green eyeshadow palette that I do own. You will see some more later on but this one here is just amazing and I do absolutely love it so I'm going to keep this one. Then next is my Romantic Nomad palette and as you will see shortly it's also a 16 pan palette so just if you compare those two sizes. And I just wanted to show you how tiny these pans are. I mean, look at my nail next to it. It's the size of my fingertip, so they are really, really tiny. So there are also 16 eyeshadows in these palettes. So I do quite like it because I never use up eyeshadow and it's great to have such a great variety of colors, but you don't have to have so much product of each color. So I do really like this format. I do really love this formula and also the color story. I think that the mattes don't perform as good as in the bigger palettes, but they are still quite nice and absolutely workable. So I would definitely keep this palette if I wouldn't have so many other eyeshadow palettes that I do love. So I think I'm going to give this one away because I know that I want to gift some of my palettes to my sister and I think a tiny palette like this with these many color options is great for her. So I'm going to gift this one here to her and also the Colore Vivace palette. I'm going to show it to you next. So this is what the two of them are looking like next to each other. So I do really love both of them, but I think I want to gift them to my sister because I know that she wants some palettes and I wanted to gift some of them to her. So I know that the formula is nice and they are so easy to work with. So I think they would be great for her and because they are so small, they are very easy to store. So I think they will be perfect for her, so I'm going to gift them to her. And then the last one is my Blueberry Muffin palette. And as you have seen, it's the blue one and it's an amazing formula. It's such a good palette. I think it's one of my top five from last year. So it's amazing and beautiful and I'm definitely going to keep it. So I'm going to keep three palettes and I'm going to declutter two of them. Then next are my Beauty Bay palettes and I do have two of them. So the first one that I've tried was the one that was in collaboration with Nikki from Nikki Tutorials and then I bought the Book of Magic palette during that Black Friday sale because I think it was on sale for 8 euros or something so I just couldn't resist so let's talk about those two beauties. This palette has also been in my Pandas eyeshadow series and I worked on the shade Ivy and I have hit pan on it. And this one is a beautiful formula. I'm not the biggest fan of the mattes, but it's not because of the formula. It's just that they are all not quite my colors. And I don't tend to reach for very bright colors in general. So 
they're just not what I'm looking for but the shimmers the metallics in here are so gorgeous I don't know if you have seen my video about this palette but I compared the metallics to my JD Glow Galaxy shadows which is basically my favorite eyeshadow formula of all time and they do quite compare very very similar to them so if you want to know more about it you can check out the video I will link it down below so the shimmer formula is so 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 amazing that I don't really know what to do with this palette because I don't want to declutter it never because I do want to keep the shimmers but I don't want to have it in this huge packaging and together with all the mattes so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to depart the shimmers and then keep the mattes in this palette and see if I still use them or if I ever reach for them and if not then I'm maybe also going to depart them or maybe I'm going to declutter them but for now this pile is going on to my depotting pile so there will be quite a huge amount of palettes that I'm going to depot because I'm a huge fan of single eyeshadows I love them I play with them almost every day I build my own custom palettes almost I don't know every few days I build a new palette for myself and then I use it and I just enjoy everything about it so so much I love creating dupe palettes and if you want to see some dupes please let me know down below in the comments I love filming those videos and I love creating dupes so I do absolutely love my single shadows and whenever I have departed anything I reached for it so much more than I have ever before so departing eyeshadows is really really a good thing for me because I really do reach for them a ton more so it's really something that's quite good for me so I'm going to depart these ones as well then next is my book of magic palette and it's a quite new one for me because as mentioned before I've ordered it during the Black Friday sale and then I just I don't know tried it out a few times and this is what the color story is looking like it's a beautiful beautiful palette I love the color story there's not a whole lot of neutrals in it which is not the best for me because typically I do wear more neutral shades at least matte ones and then I top it off with some colorful shimmer so the shimmers in here are beautiful it's the same formula as in the Nikki tutorials palette so that's why I wanted to have this palette I wouldn't have needed it for the mattes but the shimmers are beautiful and it's so funny because when I first gotten it I swatched some of the shimmers especially those two ones and I wasn't that impressed with it and then one day later I applied those two to my eyes and it was so unbelievably beautiful so swatched they don't look that good but on the eyes they are so sparkly and so stunning so I'm definitely going to keep this palette for now I'm not going to depart it I want to see if I reach for this whole palette a bit more because as mentioned it's pretty new so I just have to see how I feel about it but if I don't reach for it that much I think I'm also going to depart the shimmers because that was my original plan so why I got this palette I just wanted to have all these beautiful shimmers in here and in this beautiful stunning formula so I'm very curious to see what their next release is going to be they've had a pink one for Valentine's Day and I'm not that much into pinks but I'm really interested in seeing what they do next I hope that they bring out some kind of a I don't know maybe a pastel color story for springtime with some of those beautiful metallics would be great so I would buy it they are pretty inexpensive so I think the retail price for this one is something about I don't know 12 to 16 euros and I've gotten it on sale for 8 euros so it's a great price point so I'm going to keep this one so for my Beauty Bay palettes I'm going to keep both of them this is going to be departed and this I keep it as it is so next I do have my Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes and as you can see I have five of them the first one is my Norvina palette and it's my Pandit palette for this year so I'm definitely going to keep it I'm not going to show you the inside because it would be a spoiler so if you want to keep up with this project I will be linking it down below and let me tell you there are some spoilers in this palette so I can't show you the color story but if you want to see the inside of this palette you can check out my Pandit palette intro and you will see it so I'm definitely going to keep this one so these are the other four palettes that I do own and I think I'm just going to open all of them. So I have Sultry, Modern Renaissance, 
Riviera and the Kali Bible one. So I've gotten this one as a gift on Christmas and it was on my wish list for over a year I think and it's truly amazing. So I'm going to open all of them up. So as you can see all of them are quite used and quite loved. I do love the ABH formula and I kind of wish that they would bring out a new palette that I could love and bring into my collection. I'm ready for a new one from them. So the Kali Bible palette is my newest one, so you can't see that much usage on it, but it's a stunning palette. I wanted it for such a long time and now I really do know why, because it's a beautiful color story. It's so stunning. I do love these two shades for an all over lit eyeshadow and a one and done eyeshadow look. So this is a stunning formula, I do absolutely love it. This one here is my oldest ABH palette and I think the oldest palette in my collection in general. It's the Modern Renaissance palette and I do absolutely love it. This one here is the Sultry palette, also one of my favorites. It's a beautiful neutral color story. And then this one here is such a beautiful palette. Every time I open it up, I don't know, my heart makes a beat. I don't know what it is, but the color story is just so beautiful. I do wish though that those two shades here, Cun and Palm, would be of a better quality because they can be quite patchy and harder to work with. I think if those two would be a better quality, I would reach for this palette even more often. But I do have huge dips in the metallics here. So I really do hope that one of those two or both of them will be rolled in in my next Pandas eyeshadow series. And again, I'm going to start it soon and I do absolutely love this formula, so I'm going to keep all of them. Then from Juvia's Place I do own three palettes and this one here is the Deuce palette. It was also in my Pandas eyeshadow series, I fit pen in this eyeshadow here. This is a lovely formula and a beautiful color story and I'm definitely going to keep this one. Then those two here are a bit of a different story because I do love some of the shades in here but not all of them. So this is what the two palettes are looking like. The tri palette is a beautiful color story. Just the middle of the row, I never reach for these oranges and coppers. I don't know, it, they are just not my colors. I fit pen in this one during a project pen. And then in this palette here, I don't like the three mattes because they are, those two browns are very warm toned. And then this one here is more like a pink or magenta and I just never reach for it. I also don't like how they perform, they're quite patchy on me, I don't know what it is, maybe because they're a bit older, I don't know, but I never reach for the mattes in here, but I would love to reach for some of the more colorful metallics here, so I've decided to depart both of them, because I know I would use them so much more if I would have them in a single form. I absolutely love this green metallic here and also this one here, that's a light green duochrome. But I never reach for them because they are in this palette and I don't know, I just always forget about them. But if they are in my single collection, I could just pick them out and pick them for my custom palette of the week or of the day, I don't know. I change them up quite frequently, so sometimes I just have them for one or two days. But I do just love my singles so much and I do reach for them so much that I think I would really get so much more use out of these shadows. And they are way too beautiful to give them away. I want to keep them in my collection, but I really want to make sure that I reach for them and that I truly use them. So I'm going to depart both of these palettes. So I'm going to film my departing process and I think what I'm going to do is that I don't know if I want to depart the whole big pants or if I just want to repress them in smaller pants. I haven't decided yet. Maybe it's different for each shadow, I don't know, but I'm definitely going to film a departing video for you. So from Juvia's Place I will keep one of them in its original form and two of them I'm going to depart. Although the packaging is so beautiful and I don't want to miss it but I just never reach for the eyeshadows and it just doesn't make sense to keep them as they are. So the next I do have these three palettes from Essence and this one here is my newest one. I've just gotten it a few days ago. I've seen it online already and then I've decided to try it and film a review of it and I'm going to show it to you in a separate video with some other new Essence stuff and it's called Out in the Wild and it's a quite small palette, it's almost the size of a 12 pound palette from Colourpop and it has this more cool toned, neutrally 
color story with some golden shimmers and a dark green and so far I do really like it it's a really really nice formula especially the mattes are beautiful and I don't really like it so for now I'm going to keep it then next this is the good day Sydney palette and it's looking like this it's a bit more of a warmer color story and then it has a green and a teal and I don't know the formula is not that good it's quite powdery the mattes are pretty much blending away and the shimmers are also not that impactful so I'm going to give this one away and the next is the Ariel palette this one has been a palette from their Disney collection and their Disney collaboration so it's Ariel themed and it has this very warm toned I don't know coppery pinky color story with some neutrals and some pops of color and it's a very beautiful color story and also it's a very beautiful formula I just know that I'm not going to reach into it this one here is a stunning shadow I love this one down here but overall it's just all too warm toned and I know that this one here looks very cool toned and this one as well but that's just because of this coppery background when I apply them to my eyes they are just warm toned so I don't know I just know that I will never reach for it again this one it's just ridiculous to you uh, to keep it because I just will never use it I know it this these are just not the colors I reach for so it wouldn't make any sense okay okay I'm clear now I'm going to give this one away I'm going to give it to my sister if she wants it and if not I think I can also resell it because I'm sure that a lot of people wanted to get some palettes from the Disney collection and couldn't get it so maybe someone will be really, really happy if I'm going to sell it so I will see what I'm doing with it but I'm going to declutter it so now here are all of my Catrice palettes, I do have five of them. So the first one is this one here, it's called the Future Female Palette à Porter Eyeshadow Palette. And this formula is so awful, it doesn't show up, it doesn't blend, it blends away into nothing. None of the shadows you can really see on the lid, so I don't know what the point of this is. Because it really doesn't do anything, you can use nothing and it's looking like the same, so... I don't get the point with this eyeshadow palette, I'm going to declutter it. Then next I do have three of those five in a box eyeshadow palettes and I do quite like this formula a lot. I have filmed a video where I compared these little palettes to the mini ones from Natasha Denona. So if you want to check that video out, I will try to link it down below. And I do really like this formula, but I don't want to keep all of them. So this one here is a warm toned one and I know that I never reach for it. So I'm going to give it to a friend. I think they are quite handy because they are so small and so compact and the formula is really nice. It's not the best of the best, but it's really good. You can work with it, it's easy to blend. The shimmers aren't my favorites, they're not that impactful, they're not that sparkly, so they're not, I don't know, outstanding, but they are good for an everyday look. So I'm going to give this one here away. Then this one here I did have in a project pan. I do really, really like this one. I think this one here is my favorite out of the three of them. So I'm going to keep this one, especially for this shade here. It's a stunning brown metallic and I do absolutely love this one. So I'm going to keep this one. So this one here is the soft rose look and I'm going to keep this one. Then this one here is called the modern smoky look and I'm not going to keep this one. I have used those two a lot in my Pandas eyeshadow series and I do like the formula but I do have these colors over and over again so I just don't need it in this format and I know that my mother wants to try these little guys so I'm going to give this one to her and I think she will enjoy it as well. So this one here is also going. And then this one here is really a harder one because it's the Maleficent palette. It was also from the Disney Villains collection and collaboration with Essence and Catrice. It's a stunning, stunning color story. It's just that it's too warm toned for me. I thought it would be more cool toned. I don't know why, because now it looks so warm toned. But also this one and this one and this one, they are so similar and so warm. and. It just doesn't make sense to keep this palette because I only use this matte down here and then those two shimmers and this one and that's it and I don't want to keep a whole palette for like I don't know four or five eyeshadows if there are 16 eyeshadows in a palette I think that there is someone who would really use the whole palette and who would love it and again I think that a lot of people maybe have missed out on the on this Disney collaboration with Catrice so I think a lot of people would be happy to get it so I'm going to resell this one I think because I only used it 
I don't know, maybe five times or so and it's a, in a quite good condition. So I think I could easily resell it and someone else would be so happy to get it. So I'm going to give this one here away. I would keep it only for this eyeshadow here, which is called Fiery because it's such a beautiful sparkly topper eyeshadow. But I've discovered that I have a pretty good dupe for it. Maybe it's even a better one because it's a super shock shadow by Colourpop and it's called Ritz. And it's almost exactly the same. Maybe not exactly in the tone, but in the formula and in the finish, it's almost the same and it's so much, I don't know, it's even more beautiful. So there's no sense for keeping this whole palette for one eyeshadow when I have it in a dupe form in a single version. So it just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to give this one away. So for my Catrice palettes, I'm going to keep one and I'm going to give away four. Okay, so next is my Jeffree Star collection and I think I have to put a little disclaimer here. I'm not supporting the brand anymore. I do have all these palettes from before that and the only palette that I've gotten after all the latest drama happened is this one here and it was a gift so I just couldn't say no and yes, I tried it and I have some serious thoughts on this palette so wait for it. So. I'm not going to declutter all of them because of the brand, but I only, I really only want to keep the ones that I truly, truly love and don't want to live without and everything else I'm going to declutter from this brand from now on. But what I truly love and what I can use up kind of, I want to keep. So let's just go through this. So let's just go through these. So I do own those two mini palettes. This one is the Mini Breaker palette. I think it has a quite stunning color story and I really enjoyed it when I first gotten it, but I just don't reach for colors like this anymore. And if I would reach for them, I would reach for them in a single version. So I just don't need to keep this palette around. I never reach for those pinks and light purples. I do love this shade here, which is called Oral, but I do have a color like this. It's like a duochrome between a purple and a blue and it's beautiful, but I do have it in a single version from an indie brand that's just more beautiful. So I don't have to keep this whole palette just for this eyeshadow here. And I think it's in a pretty good condition, so I think I can resell it. So I'm going to declutter this one. So this palette here I've gotten for my birthday in the summertime and I was really excited to try this neutral, I don't know, mini palette. I think it's quite a nice color story and color selection, but the formula in here is so strange. So three of the eyeshadows are just garbage. This one, this one and this one, they don't show up. They don't have any pigment in them. And I don't know why it is. They feel so hard to the touch and you can barely see them. So there's almost no color in them. And just for example, if I swatch this one here, this is a different formula and you can see how you can really see it. So so you can see when I swatch them, they're almost not there. And if I swatch the other one, it's looking like this. So. I don't know, but you can barely see the other one. So I think that something went terribly wrong with this formula. What I'm going to do is I'm going to depart the eyeshadows that I like, which are mainly those three in the middle. And then I have them as singles and they are beautiful, especially this one here. I do love it. It's a duochrome. You have to really dig into it to get it out, but then it's stunning. I hope that when I repress it, it gets a bit softer and easier to wear. But it's at least better than the other three of them. So this is going on my depotting pile. So the next I do have the Alien palette. I hate the packaging. It's so, I don't know, awful to store. These eyes here are going up, so you really can't stack anything on top of it. And just the shape is so weird and this little thingy here is so wobbly and it's so, I don't know. I just don't like the packaging, but I do love the color story and I do absolutely love the formula in this palette. So I think this is the best formula that he has ever done in a palette. And it's a bit sad because I don't know, it's I think over two years ago and every palette that I've tried after this one, it just wasn't as good. 
So I think this is his best formula and I do love the color story, I love all the grays and I love this duochrome down here, I love Interstellar, it's so stunning and, and Pluto is my favorite inner corner highlight of all time. If I could only wear this one in my inner corner for the rest of my life I would be happy because it's so stunning and I do absolutely love it. So I'm going to keep this palette because I love it so so much. Then next is my Blue Blood palette and I was so in love with this palette when I first gotten it. But back then I didn't really know a lot about formulas I would say because this isn't the best formula that I've ever tried. Some of the shades in here are really beautiful but some of them are just not working very good. So these two down here are very patchy. These two here don't really show up. I can do what I want. I can never really make them work. So they are, I don't know, unusable for me. This one here has so much hard pan. I don't know. It has it from the first day. It's a satin shade and it's an awful formula. And I do absolutely hate this shade down here. It's very crumbly. And it has kind of little balls. I don't know how to describe it. And then you have to rub it into your skin so that it shows up. But then you have a ton of fallout. And I mean, you don't want to have this kind of a blue fallout all over your face. And then it also stains like hell. So you're totally pink the next day. And I don't know. This shadow is garbage, I don't know. The other ones in here are beautiful. This one here is such a beautiful everyday crease shade. I love the minty and light blues, they are beautiful. For mattes they are really really beautiful and I do absolutely love those metallics here but overall I don't know, I would say half of it is good and half of it is not good so that's not a good ratio for a palette this size and also for this kind of money. So I don't know, I did really like the packaging and the whole format of it and the color story and everything but I think I do have so many other good blue eyeshadow palettes that I just don't have to keep it and because I don't know, I don't really want to support the brand anymore and I just found myself never reaching for palettes from this brand other than my Alien palette so I think there's no point in keeping this one and I think I could easy I think I can still resell it so maybe someone else would like it and yes, I'm going to declutter this one. So the last palette I do own from this brand is the Bloodlust palette and it's the purple one. This is what it's looking like on the inside. And I have to say, a lot of the shades in here do work very very nicely and they are beautiful. Especially those three here and this one and also the matte purples, this one here, they all blend beautifully. I do really enjoy this formula, but those two shades here were so hard to work with and so patchy and I do love these colors. So I've, I don't know, I was so excited for those two shades here, but they just don't work for me. I cannot blend them out evenly. They look so patchy. I tried them a few times and they just didn't work and I don't know, after I was done filming the whole drama happened and I never wanted to reach for this palette ever again. So I haven't touched it in a month. So I think at this point it's ridiculous to keep it because I never reached for it. I haven't reached for it since I filmed the last video with it, which was, I don't know, maybe in April or in May. So I don't want to keep it anymore. It's almost one year since I've touched it and I just don't want to reach for it and I do have purples in other formulas and in other palettes and in single versions that I do love so I just don't have to keep it for that. So I'm going to declutter this one as well. Okay so for my Jeffree Star collection I'm going to declutter three palettes and I'm going to keep one and then I'm going to depart one. Then next I do have my Morphe palettes, I do have five of them and four of them came in a bundle so those tiny ones here have been in the vault collection. It was in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill and this one here is the original palette with Jaclyn Hill. So let's start with the smaller ones. So the first one is the Armed and Gorgeous one. It's a beautiful color story. It's just not quite what I'm using. So I think I'm going to declutter this one. The formula is okay. It's not my favorite one, but it's also not a bad one. I think that the army green here wasn't the best. It was a bit patchy and those metallics got hard pen quite easily. So this one here is a beautiful, very white and strong inner corner highlight. But overall, I think I just don't need to keep it. So I'm going to declutter this one. Then the next one is called Bling Boss and it's the 
purple one. I have tried to depot this one and I totally um, broke this shadow and it's just not working anymore. So it was before I started really getting to know a bit more about repressing eyeshadows and depotting eyeshadows and everything. So I just destroyed this eyeshadow, which is a shame because it was a beautiful dark purple one. But the other colors in here are also quite beautiful. I'm not the biggest fan of the metallics from Morphe. I don't know, I feel like they have some kind of qualities to them that are quite unique and that I do enjoy because I feel like those are very very good for using them as one eyeshadow look so because they do usually have a pretty strong base pigment to them and then they are not crumbly they have this oil slick feeling to them so they are very easy to blend out with a fluffy brush so I think they do have a really good I don't know they do have this one quality to them so I don't like to wear those metallics together with some mattes but I do like to wear them on their own because they're quite nice for that and also they are quite nice to use as a base if you want some other shadows that you have that are a bit more on the sheer side or a bit more sparkly to stick to something so they're quite nice for that and the mattes in here are beautiful they are working very fine I didn't have a problem with this one here and I did really enjoy it so I think for now I'm going to keep it because I want to see if I get it in my Pentas eyeshadow series and I just would love to I don't know maybe try it out a bit more and see if I reach for it a bit more or if I want to depart it I'm not that sure yet but for now I'm going to keep it then next is the ring the alarm palette I've had it in my Pentas eyeshadow series I fit pen in lolly and Again, it's not my favorite formula, it's also not my least favorite formula. I think it's a good formula, it's just not what I reach for every day. These shadows in here are so warm toned and I never want to use warm toned eyeshadows or almost never and then I do have them in other formulas that I enjoy more. But I don't know what it is about this palette, I have some, I don't know, sentimental feelings about it. So I think I'm going to keep this one in kind of a, I don't know, more like for memory reasons and not for using it so this one will be not in my I don't know not in my eyeshadow collection anymore I will be just keeping it in a memory box and just I don't know I just want to keep it I don't want to declutter it because maybe one day I want to retreat again I don't know but I don't want to have it in my collection because I'm sure that I'm not going to use it anymore so I just don't want to give it away so I'm going to keep it but it will be out of my collection then next is the dark magic palette and this palette has been through some things so this palette here looks a bit shattered because i dropped it not only once but i think twice and the black eyeshadow here i think it was temptress it shattered and it was everywhere and yes yeah, so it was the whole thing and then i departed power cut trickery and diversion this one is a beautiful silver, Diversion is a dark, I don't know, dark grayish brown and Trickery is a stunning dark green metallic and I do love those three. I have them in my single collection and I use them all the time, especially Power Cut is one of my all-time favorite eyeshadows and I wouldn't have known it if I haven't departed them. So this is the reason why I do want to depart a lot of eyeshadows now because I just know how much use I can get out of them if they're not in palettes that I don't reach for. So I'm going to declutter this palette now. I wasn't a big fan of the mattes in here. I think those three were very patchy, not easy to work with. Also this one here, a cool tone brown. I don't know why, but it was so patchy on me. It didn't work. And the brown and also this light color here, I just don't need them. I have them in other palettes and in a single version, so I just don't have to keep them. So I'm going to declutter this one now. And then the last one is my original Jaclyn Hill palette and it's looking like this at the moment because I have departed all of the metallics in here except this one here and I'm also going to depart all of the mattes in here. Maybe not all of them, I'm not the biggest fan of the darker ones down here, they're very patchy, not easy to work with but those transition shades here, the yellow and this rusty color, I do want to have them in my single collection. I don't have a lot of warm tones there, so I think they would quite add something to it and also those two teals here and the green. So I'm going to depart the rest of these eyeshadows as well. So this is going onto my departing pile. 
I do own quite some palettes why I only have one of each brand so I'm just going through all of them now and then the last part will be all of my Colourpop palettes which is the biggest part of my eyeshadow collection so let's start with those here so this little guy here is from elf it's i think the newest one in my collection i've just recently got it um i don't know a few weeks ago and it's from their mint melt collection and it's one of their tiny bite size eyeshadow palettes and it's in the shade mint to be so it's all minty colors and I've basically gotten this palette because I wanted a color like this in a single form and it was cheaper to buy this little palette here and have all these other beautiful shades as well and just to pop this one because I just couldn't find a color like this in, I don't know, in a single version. So this one was quite easy to get for me and it's a beautiful palette. I did want to film a whole haul with all the things that I've gotten from e.l.f. but I just never came to filming it so yes let me know down below if you still want to see a little makeup haul because i've gotten quite a few new makeup items that i would love to share with you because i could also review all of them by now so this one here is a beautiful palette i do absolutely love all these shades in here i think this one here is maybe the weakest one out of them but this one here is so easy to blend it's pigmented it's everything that i wanted and the color is exactly what i was looking for those two metallics are also quite nice and i really enjoy this little guy so i'm not sure if i want to depot it right away or if i want to keep it i think for now i'm going to keep it in this little format because it's so tiny it's very easy to just have on my vanity all the time so it's a beautiful little palette and I'm going to keep it. Then next is my only Natasha Denona palette. It's the mini retro palette. It's the pink and gray one. I do really, really hope that she will be bringing out a bigger version of this one. I would love it, but I would only get it if it's in the $65 range because I don't want to pay more for an eyeshadow palette. So if she would bring it out in a bigger version, I might be interested in it. I really like the formula in here. I wasn't that impressed, but it's a good formula. I don't know how to describe it. I thought that I would be more impressed with her formula, but it's still beautiful. This one here is not very impactful, so I, I don't know, I wasn't the biggest fan of this shade here, although for an everyday look, it's beautiful. This one here is stunning. It has a lot of texture and depth to it. And this one here is a very, very sparkly topper eyeshadow. The mattes blend very easily, they are beautiful. So I do still like it and I'm glad that I tried it and now I want to try more. But I don't know, I don't want to get her palettes for the retail price and for the $129. It's just too much for me for an eyeshadow palette. But I do like the formula and I'm going to keep it. This one here is also one of my newest palettes. It's from Flower Beauty which is the brand from Drew Barrymore and which I wanted to try for such a long time, but I just couldn't get this brand here in Europe. I do live in Austria, so that's a small country in the middle of Europe. And I don't know, it's quite hard to get Flower Beauty here. I have only seen it, I think, in the UK so far. I don't know, maybe it's also available in other European countries, but not in mine. But then I found out that I could purchase it through Amazon.com, so the international side from Amazon. And I could ship it to Austria, so I could get this palette. I wanted it for such a long time and the formula is stunning. I do absolutely love this one. So I'm planning to film a video about my most, I don't know, most extraordinary and most beautiful shadows in my collection. and. This formula will definitely be in it. It's such a stunning formula. I actually I can't believe that it is in a palette like this. Although it's so beautiful to look at it. I love the packaging. I love these rose gold things. And I don't know, it, it's stunning. It's really, really stunning. And for the price, it's crazy how good it is. The pens are in this very big size and it looks so beautiful when you look at it. I want to have it on hand all the time. I've gotten it in the beginning of January and I couldn't put it down so I always have it on my vanity because it's so beautiful to look at it and I want to use it all the time. So they really did something right with this palette and now I'm even more intrigued to try some other things from this brand. But this eyeshadow formula is amazing. So 
definitely a keeper. Then next I have this palette here from W7 on the rocks and it's a dupe for the subculture palette by ABH. It's looking like this. I've had it in my Pandas eyeshadows project pan. I've hit pan and two eyeshadows in here. The formula of the mattes in here is amazing. I have to say though that the metallics are very disappointing and I'm glad that there are only three of them in this palette. The other ones are performing beautifully. But this palette really feels a bit cheap. It doesn't have a lot of weight to it, so it's a very, very light one. And I don't know, you can really feel that it's just cheap or affordable. It's just, I don't know, I can feel it, I can see it, it doesn't really look beautiful. I don't like the packaging on it. I don't like the packaging in here. It just has something cheap feeling around it. So I don't know if I want to keep it or not. I think. It really showed me that I would like the subculture color story, but not that much that I would have to have it in my collection. I think I do own all of these shades in other palettes or in single version, one or the other. So I'm not sure if I have to keep it, but I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what to do about this palette. I think I do want to start a series on my channel that is called Makeup on the Chopping Block. I just didn't have a chance to start filming all these videos that I'm planning to do and that I'm always talking about, but I just have to catch up with all the content that I've missed in December and in January. So yes, I just have to wait till I can start all my new projects, but I think that this is going on the chopping block. So I'm going to keep it and then I'm going to use it for some weeks and then I'm going to decide what to do with it. Because the formula is so good, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm keeping it for now. Then next I do have this palette here from Alama Cosmetics. It's the Reina del Caribe Volume 1 palette. This is what it's looking like on the inside. It's such a beautiful, beautiful color story. The formula is amazing. I do really like it. I've only gotten it a few days ago because I've purchased it online second hand. I do love to purchase palettes that are out there for a bit longer second hand because I can save so much money on them and usually it's always a good experience. So I've only paid I think 8 euros including shipping for this palette. So it was quite cheap and affordable and I wanted it for such a long time. So I especially wanted this palette to depot it. So I've bought it because I wanted all of these shades in single versions and it was easier and cheaper for me to buy this palette and then depot it than to buy eight single shadows. So I'm going to depot this one because it was the whole reason of buying it. I think the formula is amazing, especially this shadow here is so, so beautiful and the mattes blend like a dream. So I love Alamar as a brand. I follow them on Instagram. I have never purchased anything before. I always wanted this palette here and yes. As Hannah Louise Poston says, I'm following the future career with great interest because I kind of love this brand. So I'm going to depart this palette. And then next, this is my Dominic Cosmetics palette. It's the Latte palette. It's the first palette that they ever released. So this is the only palette that I own from this brand and I'm a huge fan of this formula. I think the formula is amazing. The mattes Again, they blend like a dream. They are so buttery and soft. So the matte formula is wonderful. And also the shimmers here, the metallics, they are sparkly. They have depth to them. They are beautiful. The thing that I don't like about this palette is that everything neutral here in the top row is so warm toned. I really enjoyed having it in my collection. I did absolutely love this metallic here. It's the only cool toned one in here. It's called Macchiato and it's a beautiful champagne color. This one here has so much sparkle in it and it's almost a green color. It's such a beautiful shade. I've thought about depotting some of them, but I think it's just not something that I have to do because I do have these shades down here in my single collection and also in other palettes and warm tones I really don't need any more of them and those two here weren't my favorite so I wouldn't keep it I don't know I wouldn't depart this palette for those two so I think because this palette is in quite good shape I think it's better to give it away to someone who would use it as it is than to depart it so it doesn't make sense for me to depart anything of it and I also don't want to keep it anymore 
I thought that I want to keep it because it's the only palette from this brand, but if I don't reach for it, it doesn't make sense. So I'm really interested in trying some other palettes from her. So again, I'm just following what they're releasing in the future. I do quite like her color stories usually, but there wasn't the right one for me in there. So I think that maybe whenever I want to get another palette from her and now know that the formula is beautiful. So I'm definitely going to try some more of her brand in the future. But for now, this one here is going. Now the last part of my collection are my Colourpop palettes and as you can see I have quite a few of them. I do absolutely love the formula from Colourpop and what I love even more is that the pens in the palette are magnetic so I can use them as singles and as mentioned before I do absolutely love my single eyeshadows and I love palettes where I can use them in the palette and also as singles. I think that's that's the perfect way for me. So in the future, whenever I think about buying a new palette, I don't know, I think that I want to focus on palettes where the pens are removable and are magnetic. So I'm thinking about brands like Kaleidos and I don't know, Alter Ego I can't get in Europe, which is a shame. I would love to try them. Then Natasha Denona, I know they are magnetic and I don't know, a few other ones. So there are quite some brands where you can remove the pens because they are magnetic and it's very easy to depot them and then pop them back in. So that's the way for me. And that's why I have so many of these palettes here because when I started to getting into single eyeshadows, I needed to get, I don't know, quite a lot of them at the same time. And it was just too expensive to buy from indie brands and to buy individual eyeshadows. It was way easier and more affordable for me to buy all those monochromatic palettes here from Colourpop. I mean, I didn't buy them all at the same time. I bought them all over the last two years, I think. And it was quite good for me to kind of start my single eyeshadow collection. So let's go through all of them. Okay, so let's start with the 9 pen monochromatic palettes. I do have the Orangey Glad, Aha Honey, It's My Pleasure, Main Squeeze, Strawberry Shake and Ooh La La. So I bought all of them because I wanted to have all these little pens that are in here as single eyeshadows and I use them all the time for building my dupe palette. So that's always when you see something from Colourpop, it's almost always something from one of these little palettes here. And I think if you want to start your single collection and you don't know where to start and you need something affordable at first, I can highly recommend these because the great thing about these monochromatic palettes is that you have a huge amount of different shades of the same color and that's quite useful if you want to create duping palettes. I mean, if you only want to have them for yourself and to play with them, you may not need all, I don't know, nine shades of yellow, but if you want to create dupes, it's quite nice to have all of them. This palette here I unfortunately dropped and three of the shades I couldn't save. I'm so sad because I would love to have those two again. This one here is Earth Shine and this one here is Mr. Sandman. And I have thought about repurchasing this palette so many times but I haven't done it yet. So maybe one day I'm pulling the trigger and I'm going to repurchase it for it. But for now I don't have the three shades anymore. Okay, and then the last one here is the main squeeze one. So this is what they're all looking like. As you can see, a lot of different colors and yes, all very monochromatic. I do love all of them. I'm going to keep all of them because I need them for my, as mentioned before, for my duping palettes. I'm not a big fan of the glitters and I think I'm going to kind of toss them and then maybe repress something else in those little pans. I think that would be pretty good because I never use these pressed glitters from Colourpop. I don't like them. I wear contact lenses and I think it's way too riskful to use them in the eye area. So I'm not really wearing them and I'm not using them on my nails because I do have glitter nail polish enough so I don't need to have pressed glitters for them. So I don't know, maybe I'm going to depart these little glitters and press something else into them but for now I'm keeping all of these palettes and I think if I'm getting another big empty magnetic palette I'm going to depart all of them and just sort them in the magnetic palette so that I don't have to always pop them out and back in because I never really reach for these palettes in another way than to pick some shadows out of them. So yes, these are the first ones and I'm going to keep all of them. 
Okay, then the next ones are my Blue Moon palette, the blue one here. This is the Mint to Be. This is Blow and Smoke. So taupe, just my luck, and going coconut. So these are all beautiful palettes, and these are all more my color stories than the other ones that you've seen. So I love the blue palette. It's a great affordable little blue eyeshadow palette. If you ever want a pop of blue, I can highly recommend this palette. Then I do love my mint palette. This one here is absolutely amazing. If you ever want anything dark and smoky or gray and silver, this palette, this formula is so good. I do love this palette. This one down here is such a stunning eyeshadow for a smoky eye and this one here, they are beautiful. I do absolutely recommend this one here if you're looking for colors like this. The So Taupe palette, I don't know, wasn't the biggest fan. I don't know what it is about this palette. I know a lot of people do like it, but I feel like, hmm, I don't know, this one here is very warm. This one here is more like on the mauve side. Snake Eyes I do have as a single. Wasn't the biggest fan of this one here. This one is beautiful and uh, Super Shark Shot in here is also very beautiful. This is very brown. I think this could have been a bit more on the taupey side. I don't know. But I mean, the, the formula is good. The eyeshadows are just a bit more powdery and they have a lot of kick up. And that's not usually the case with Colourpop. But I don't know. It's still good and I still want to keep it, but it's not the best one. The green palette here is absolutely beautiful. It's my second favorite green eyeshadow palette in my collection. The first one is the Avocado Toast one and then the second one is definitely this one here. It's a beautiful formula. I know that Mary Jane and Big Banks you can get as singles now and they are beautiful. And then the Going Coconuts palette is a beautiful neutral palette that is more on the warmer side and the So Taupe is a bit more on the cooler side so it's also a beautiful palette. I'm again going to keep all of them. Then these are my last nine pen palettes. I mean, I think I do have enough of them. Um, this is the Elsa palette from the Frozen 2 collection. This is the Child palette from the Mandalorian collection. This is the Baroque palette and this is the Making Morphs palette. So this is how they are all looking like. And I think that this is actually my second favorite green palette in my collection. This is so beautiful. I mean, I'm a huge Star Wars fan and I'm a huge Mandalorian fan. So this is quite up my alley. It's such a beautiful packaging. They did everything right with this one here, but also the color story, the formula, the quality. This palette is amazing. Then this palette here, I do also like a lot. This one here has a pressed glitter, which I don't like. So I'm also going to depart this one here. This shade here is a beautiful transition shade for me and then this one here all over the lid is so beautiful. It's more of a duochrome shade but it's not too intense so it's perfect for every day. The silver here is stunning, the blue is amazing. Those two are quite similar so I think we wouldn't have needed both of them. This one here is not that impactful so I would change this one out for something else but I mean it's in here. This one here is a very nice one. So overall, I do really like this palette. Then the two on the bottom here are the newest ones in my collection. So I only have them for a few weeks. I've bought them during the Black Friday sale and they just came in in January, in the first two January weeks. I do like the color story of the Bolesque palette because it is so unique and something very, very different than all of the other palettes from Colourpop. It's very dark, but what I don't like about it is that it has three mattes in here that do have glitter in them. And I mean, it's not a big glitter, so it's okay for the eyes, but it's just, I don't like having these dark shades with glitter in them. They just don't make sense for me and I don't really want to use them. And even if they wouldn't have glitter in them, those five shades here, they are so dark and all kind of a dark bluish gray. So they kind of all look similar. So I would say we wouldn't have needed five eyeshadows that are so similar to each other. So I wish that there would be some kind of, uh, I don't know, something else in there. This one here is beautiful and those two I do like a lot, especially this one here in the middle. It's more of like a grungy purple with some kind of a dark blue flip to it. This is beautiful. I still like this palette, but it's just, I don't know, I feel like it could have been even more exciting and even more versatile. 
This one here is the Making Moths palette and this one here surprised me because, I don't know, I feel like the mattes that you get, most of them are more like on the cool toned mauve side. Only this one here is a bit more on the warmer side. But the three here in the middle, they are very pinky and, I don't know, warm pinky colors, not that mauve. So I feel like the shimmers or the metallics in here don't really go with the mattes in here, especially this one here in the middle. So again, I'm going to keep all of them. I do love these palettes, especially those two in the top row. These are some of my favorite palettes of my whole collection. So I just love the ColourPop formula. I love the packaging. Okay, so these are the last four ones. So these are the bigger sized palettes. These three here are 12 pen. So first is the Midnight Masquerade palette from the Disney Designer Collection. It does have 15 eyeshadows in here and it has this beautiful packaging with all the princesses here. It's so beautiful. It does have two pressed glitters in it, so I'm going to also depart those two and put something else in here. The color star is beautiful. I especially love the mattes in here. They are so stunning. The quality is amazing. I do love the green in here. Not the biggest fan of this one here. This one here is okay. They are dual chromes and I don't know, they're not very metallic, but this one here is okay for an everyday look, but this one here doesn't really show up, so not the biggest fan of this one. This one is very orangey copper and this one here is a dirty gold they're not quite the best shades for me but their quality is nice so i really like this palette i'm definitely going to keep it because i use it a ton for building some custom palettes next is the zodiac palette this was in collaboration with kathleen lights i think it's discontinued at this point the packaging is so beautiful i love it so so much and this is what the color story is looking like. I do absolutely love it. I do love a lot of the shades in here, especially this one here, then this one here. Oh, I think that these two are in the wrong spot. So I think the peachy one is the Cancer and the golden one is the Gemini. So yeah, they are wrong. I've just used them the other day and just popped it back in before I started filming. And I do love the pescas, I do love the browns in here, the oranges. I absolutely love the purple, so I think overall the quality is good. And I do really, really enjoy this palette and I do use it a ton. So I'm definitely keeping it. Next, this is my oldest Colourpop palette. And the first one that I've tried, it's called You Had Me At Hello. And to be very cheesy, Colourpop really had me at hello when I opened this palette. So it really swept me off my feet because the formula is so amazing. I think that the formula in this palette is even better than in any of their other palettes. Although I do quite like a lot of them, but this formula is so, so good. I do absolutely love the mattes in here. They are so stunning. Metallics are beautiful too. I do like this color story. It's so unique and so beautiful. And I don't know, every time I open it, I just love it again. And so I'm going to keep it. And last but not least is the Wild Nothing palette. And this one here is my absolute favorite palette out of all of my palettes in my collection. This is just perfection to me. The theming, the artwork, the packaging, the color story, everything about this palette. Look at this packaging. It's just so beautiful and I'm very fair. So this is a fair girl's dream palette because it's so light and it shows up so beautifully. And I can really use every shade in this palette, which is very, very unique to me. And there are two Super Shock shadows in here, this one and this one. They're just sparkly toppers and I do love them. I would love to use them every day. They are stunning. I can even use this whole palette on my face as a face palette. This is a beautiful blush color on me as well as this one here. This is a stunning bronzer and this is a contour. So I do have everything I need in here. This one I can use as a highlight as well as this one or this one. It's just, it's perfection. I do love this palette. And if I could only keep one palette out of my whole collection, it would be this one. 
I wouldn't have to think about it, it's just this one here. I do love it so, so much. So I've started this whole video with 64 eyeshadow palettes and I'm going to declutter 19 out of them and then I'm also going to depart 6 out of them. So 25 palettes are leaving my collection and the remaining ones are 39. So I think that's quite a good amount. I mean, it's almost half of it is gone. And I think that's quite good because my collection has been so overwhelming and just too big, too much. I couldn't see what I truly like and what I enjoy. And I think it's so much more manageable now for me. So you will see some of the palettes again in my Pandas eyeshadow series. If you don't want to miss any uploads from me, please make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit the notification bell. If you want to see more videos from me, I do have some other declutter videos on my channel. I have filmed them already and there will be coming some more. So next I think will be my face products and then lip products. And there will be also some project pens starting very, very soon. So keep an eye out for them. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I wish you all a beautiful day.